Welcome, Nerd Castle, to the Emperor's Sweet Embrace for another playthrough of Battlefleet Gothic Armada, where we will stand up for the Emperor's rights. We're going to fight for our rights to fire macro cannons at everything that doesn't look like us. Welcome to the next Warhammer 40k series on the channel. If you know me, you know that I'm a giant fan of anything Games Workshop. And the campaign mode came out. The last time we played, all we were able to do was just solo skirmish over and over and over again. Now we've got campaign mode. And I am interested in seeing what goes on there. This is completely blind. I have no idea what's inside the campaign. I'm pretty good at solo skirmish at this point against the AI and can play it on multiple difficulties. But I haven't played in about two weeks. So bear with me. There's probably going to be a slight learning curve at the beginning as I repick everything back up. But I didn't want to put it off any longer. I've wanted to play it for like two weeks now. We just flat out have not had any room on the channel. And that's the truth of the matter. So now we do have room. Things have finally gone. Things have passed from this channel. Not from this world. They still exist there, obviously. But it's time to play some 40k. So without further ado, let's jump into the campaign. We're going to be playing it on normal. And there we go. For 10,000 years, the Imperium of Man has endured under the rule of the Immortal Emperor. The worlds of man are scattered across the galaxy, threatened by savage aliens, heretics who defy the Emperor's will, and horrors lurking upon forgotten worlds. It is a time of endless war, selfless heroism, and blackest infamy. I see fortresses in the stars. A circle of six, but they sleep yet and must be awakened. Lie upon the storms of chaos. Gather your rivals around you. End discord and terror throughout a thousand worlds. Abaddon the Despoiler, War Master of Chaos. You speak in meaningless riddles. What are the fortresses in the stars? Answer me or die now! Stop this foolishness. I have consorted with creatures far more powerful than Speak, Crone, but I will remember your insolence. <laughs> Seek the hand of darkness. Take the eye of night. With these, the citadels will be yours to command. A chorus of a billion throats will cry your name in fear and hatred. The stars themselves will run red with blood. If you have the courage for it, War Master. Abaddon's kind of a grumpy pants. We all just stay away from him. Even as Inspire Data Log Alpha. Battlefleet Command has lost contact with Orbital Station Aleph in the Naxos system. I'm on my way to investigate. Sir, we're approaching the location of Orbital Station Aleph. Captain, the station is surrounded by an asteroid field. I have calculated the best approach for us to pass through it safely. Your orders! So for continuity's sake, I actually... We're gonna redo all this stuff. I already know all these things that it's gonna be teaching us in here. But in case you don't know, you're about to find out. So Battlefleet Gothic is a game where we take control of space fleets in the Warhammer 40k universe and we get into giant sort of naval gun battles. Almost like 1700 style with our enemies. I, I right clicked right there. Just go for it. You can do it. I believe in you. Yes, now we will right click right here, and I could turn on full burn if I wanted to. We'll talk about all the stuff as it comes up. I actually don't think the first episodes are going to be that difficult, considering we were doing like huge- There's an active minefield directly ahead, Captain. We must maneuver quickly, or it is likely the ship will be damaged. All available power to the plasma thrusters. We're going to execute a high energy turn. A high energy turn. Alright, so high energy turn. 
We go like this, Resuming and then we go like that, and then we should be able, don't drift into the mines! Oh, that was so Orders close. Received. We got sideways right there, Energy though. Energy turn successful, Captain. The thrusters are already recharging. Helm, resume our course to the orbital station. We should. I mean, if we're able to drift like that, we might be able to show up to the ship show this year. Show people some of our sweet mods that we put on this thing. Show them our new badass carburetor and all that other stuff we got rid with chrome and all painted up to look pretty. They'd be like, damn, we just park. All it is, we all park our ships right in front of like a Mel's Diner or whatever. And then we just kind of float around in our spacesuits looking at each other's ships. Our auger arrays indicate that the orbital station is heavily damaged. I suggest we move in closer to discover what happened here. Yes, let us rub our face on the obviously booby trap space station. Changing course. Captain, we can reach the station faster by pushing the engine status to all ahead full. Very, very easy. This right here is how much fuel you have. Basically, this is like your nitrous supply for going fast and executing high energy turns. You can also order full stop, and then you can go back to cruising speed. And while you're on cruising speed, you actually regenerate in your little gauge right here. Make sure that you save it. You don't use it super often, but it's great for some of your tacklers and your ships that need to go faster to catch other guys. And then every now and again, you may need to do a high energy turn to like dodge a torpedo or cruising something like that. Set. Still good stuff, though. I'm going to close down some of these right here because I more or less know the controls of the game. It just, it's just—it's been a little Awaiting while. Orders. You can double-click to go to stuff. Wasp allows you to move things around. That space station does not look good right there. That's an orbital battery or something like that. Yeah, a defense platform. Seems like the station has been attacked recently. The enemy may still be lurking around. Sir, I recommend dispatching some of the ship's armsmen to board Orbital Station Aleph and report on what they find. Yes, Admiral. God, worst day ever. So, in this world, there's these little guys called Guardsmen, and we're part of the Imperium of Man. Guardsmen are basically just like... I don't even know what you would call them. Conscripts is a good word for them. So they go around and they just like... They conscript billions of these little guys. And seriously, on any given day in the galaxy, make no mistake, in like one war, billions of lives are lost like in one day. This is like seriously, the Imperium of Man controls like tens of thousands of worlds at this point. It just goes on forever. And so human beings are just like grist for the mill. And if you ever wake up, I talked about this the last time I played the game, but for people that might see this that are new, if you ever wake up and you're an Imperial Guardsman, they don't make enough profanity for you to express your discontent with that situation. It is gonna suck. You're basically a human being in like a World War I outfit with a rifle that doesn't hurt anything. It's essentially a flashlight. It's a laser rifle that won't kill 99.99% of the stuff that you're fighting in space. The only advantage you have is that you have amazing artillery backing you up and that there are hundreds of thousands of you all firing these laser rifles at targets just hoping that you accidentally kill something. Uh, you're expected to die in the trenches in massive numbers. Your chances of survival are just absolutely terrible. Guardsmen rarely make it fast past their first deployment, let alone a second or third. Like, if you survive, like, four deployments as a guard... Boarding party's underway, Captain. We're seeing several weapon impacts and signs of explosions on the bulkheads. We found the command center, sir. This place is a mess. It's full of bodies. The station's command crew. They're all dead. Act cautiously, Sergeant. I have a bad feeling about this. Sir, we found a survivor. Sir, the station is a trap. We're under attack by traitor forces. Captain, a defense platform on the station has activated and is targeting our vessel. Well, that is simply not acceptable. So this ship, it's equipped. Oh, I actually don't have access to it right now. Okay, so anyways, he's firing broadsides right now. That's pretty cool. This ship is equipped with a heavy prow lance, which is a big laser on the front of the ship. It's also equipped with light double macro turrets, which are on the sides. And one of the cool things you want to note is if you mouse over the weapon, it should show you where it's at on the side of the ship. And so the macro batteries are these on the sides, the macro turrets are these little guys on top, and then the prow lance is this big laser cannon on the front. Now, you're gonna have to decide how you wanna fight with your ships. Some, some ships are very, very good fighting to a front, some ships are very, very good fighting to a side. It's up to you to make the call what kind of fleet you wanna run. But I would recommend, I mean, prow lances used to be really, really good. They nerfed them in beta though, so they're not quite as good anymore. 
He's firing on him. This right here, the upper bar is shields. The bottom bar is how much hull you have left. This means that he's venting into space right now, which means he's actively I'm losing destroyed, health. destroyed, Captain. We blew it to pieces. Ship, sir. I'm picking up some strange signals in the nearby gas cloud. Well, there it is. They're hiding in the fart cloud. Our shield naturally recharges over time, but you will lose armor and you will lose hull when your shield is down. So make sure you try to maintain it. We've got a number of orders. The signals. The Iconoclast destroyers. Hey, our ships. This sector is a long way from the Eye of Terror. What could they be after here? Whatever their reasons, Captain. These heretics must be destroyed at once. Captain, consulting the ship's cogitators and machine spirit can help guide you in making tactical decisions in battle. All right, so Spacebar allows us to go into the tactical cogitator. Essentially, everyone in the Imperium worships the Emperor and the Machine Spirits, and so everything that we're using right now is from ancient technology that we can no longer reproduce, and if we can reproduce it, we reproduce it from factories where we have no idea how they work, and if they break down, we assume that it's just magic or the Machine Spirits are angry with us. We need to direct additional power to the targeting cogitators to increase our weaponry's accuracy. And we do that through clicking this button right here. There are a number of temporary states you can put on each ship. They do different things, so reload makes you fire faster. Lock-on makes you shoot better. It gives you a crit and accuracy bonus, I think. This one right here is called Brace for Impact. You want to do that one before you get hit by a torpedo or anything that does heavy damage because it lowers the amount of damage, or, well, it raises your armor and thereby lowers the damage you take and then it also lowers the enemy's accuracy which I was actually not aware of I don't know if that's new or if that was there before and then finally there's running silent which is a stealth thing which allows you to go around a little bit quieter if you're trying to avoid the enemy but those are your temporary states these guys over here we're fighting to a side right now oh are they getting us with yeah they got little fighters coming in look right there you'll see them Ooh, those are torps never mind we just got hit with torpedoes hard we can't use any of these abilities yet because they don't have them lit up we're engaging from 6k right now I would actually prefer to engage from 3k with the macro batteries because that's where their accuracy takes a giant jump. Granted, the enemy will hit us better too, but at the same time, not a terrible plan. We can also put, we've got boarding actions that we can put on enemies, but they've got to be inside. You see those little green thingamadoobies, those little wings on the sides of our ship? The enemy has to be inside of those and the shields on their ship has to be down too. And so unfortunately, I don't know if we'll be able to pull this off. I can't tell him to get closer at 3k so that we can make the boarding action viable. And right now he's skirting the distance between us and him very, very well. However, what you can do is you can right click on this so that in the case he ever comes close enough, it will auto fire boarding parties. And so you can do that with any of these two. You can just right click them so that when certain criteria are upheld, they will auto light themselves off. And frankly, I highly recommend that you do this. Because sometimes in combat, when you're dealing with 12, 15, 20 ships at a time, it's difficult to plan what everybody's doing, and so sometimes you just want them to run automated. And they will make reasonably decent choices most of the time. It's good enough to beat the computer. More than likely not good enough to beat another player, but it's good enough to beat the computer 90% of the time. I like to get close up on the explosions, so I hope that you like getting close up on the explosions. Well done, Oh, shit balls. The auger arrays are reporting more enemy signals. Many more. A gigantic chaos fleet. There's no way we could survive fighting them head on. Contact the High Command immediately. Unable to do so, Captain. All communications are jammed. Captain, there may be a way for us to escape and warn Port Moore. We could risk an emergency warp jump. It's risky to engage the warp engines this close to the star's gravitational field. But the Chaos Fleet has us boxed in! Sir, we don't have any other options! Yep, it's time to go to war. Eternal God Emperor, preserve us from the dangers of the void. So there it is, we are victorious. So the material world in this game and in this universe is connected by a place called the Void, or the Warp. 
in general, you kind of don't want to be there. It's a bad place to be. It's not going to be fun for you. All kinds of nasty creatures live there, and they tend to do all kinds of nasty things to human beings that happen to go into their territory. Now, chaos naturally is in the warp, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily good for them either. But they prefer to be around the warp and consorting with the powers of the warp. For this purposes, I guess you could kind of streamline it and think of the warp as hell. Kind of. Because demons and stuff live there, but at the same time... That's a really, really rough synopsis. It's not exactly accurate, but we don't really have time to go through 100% of Warhammer 40k lore right now in the first episode. Either way, just know that anytime you go into the warp, it's a bad plan. You really don't want to be in the warp, and you only do it if you're really, really desperate. Or you're trying to travel really, really far in between locations, and that's why they pray before they go into the warp, because bad things are known to happen to ships out there. We got 81 Renown for our win. We spend Renown on all kinds of upgrades when we win. In between, we'll be upgrading our ships, we'll be adding new parts to them and making them better, upgrading their captains, upgrading their crews. Very, very cool game that allows you to do a lot of customization. If what you say is true, Captain Spire, a vast chaos fleet is massing for attack. Inquisitor Horst, are you sure of this man? Maybe we should consider someone else. Isn't this captain from a planet that rebelled against the Emperor's will? Enough! His faith will be tested thoroughly. For he is the salvation of mankind. Obey his, his words, for he will lead you to the light of the future. Honor his servants, for they speak in his voice. Tremble before his majesty, for we all walk in his immortal shadow. Let us begin. to be certain. The enemy we face is no ordinary foe. I understand. You are to be promoted to the rank of Admiral and given command of the fleet. I will not fail you, Inquisitor. There is much to do and little time, Admiral Spire. I fear a storm coming to the Gothic Sector. One we are not yet prepared to face. The Gothic Sector is beginning to turn away from the Emperor's light. Treachery, sedition, and heresy have broken out like a plague upon our worlds. Admiral Spire, your new rank entitles you to command a small war fleet of Imperial Navy ships. It is your task to ensure the citizens of the Imperium remain safe and loyal. We shall do so. Sedition is not tolerated in the shadow of the Emperor. So yeah, that's pretty That's pretty standard right there. If somebody doesn't believe what you say and you're in like the high ranks of society, they'll just torture you real fast. Just make sure you're really, really, really not making shit up. Because the truth of the matter is, they have to act like this. They have to be ridiculous crusading space racists because they hate everybody. I call them space racists because that's what they are. They hate everybody who's not human. And they tend to hate a lot of humans too because they're traitors against the Emperors. So anyways, I guess you could call them jingoistic or isolationist or whatever you want to call them. They don't want to interact with anybody else in the gallery except at the end of a gun. And so they have to behave that way because when they don't behave that way, they get tricked and taken advantage of and they lose control of thousands of worlds and billions of people die. And so desperation has caused them to become like this. 
it kind of makes sense. So we need to go to Acre, and apparently there's a priority mission right here. So let's click on that. Your first assignment is to put an end to the unrest and rebellion threatening a nearby system. Okay. So the reward, we get 50 renown if we win. We get 25 if we lose. 30% of the cost of destroyed enemy ships. And 15% of the cost. Okay, so that'll be pretty good. Every ship in this game has a point value. That's what it's referencing right there. 30% of the cost. So a ship could cost like 140 points. You can only bring so much point value into a battle. Which is a system that I think... It's a holdover from the tabletop game. But in a video game, it's kind of weird. Because why wouldn't you send like your best fleets to defend all these areas? So just assume we're operating on a shoestring budget. And we just have to do what we have to do. And they don't want to put our entire fleet at risk. Unless they absolutely have to. It's a defender mission for 255 points. So we're probably going to have... Two cruises and an escort, maybe? Two frigs and an escort? I don't know. We'll see. This interface helps you prepare your fleet for the next mission. At the head of every fleet is the flagship. You must select one of your vessels as the flagship for each assignment. Choose your Dauntless Light Cruiser as the flagship for this first operation. So the flagship's an important ship because it doesn't suffer morale penalties. You cannot have treason on board your flagship. So you want to pick a flagship that's not going to take a ton of damage, and most importantly, you want to pick a flagship that's not going to die. Because if your flagship gets destroyed, the rest of your fleet gets fat debuffs, like really bad debuffs. And so realistically, I usually choose my biggest, baddest, most heavily armored, most throwdown ass, will knock you out type ship as my flagship. You have another captain assigned to your command. This captain commands a dauntless light cruiser, and will assist you for the duration of the mission. Add his ship to your fleet. So we've got the Shield of Truth, and then we've got the Crown of Deliverance. Ding, 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 Smaller ding, ding. ships of the Escort class can provide fire support, or scout for the enemy. The Firestorm frigates are a good choice for this assignment. So they've actually given us a new ship right here too, the Widowmaker's Destroyer. When I played in the beta, there was the Cobra, the Sword, and the Firestorm. Each of these does something different. The Firestorm frigate... Probably my favorite out of the group. All the other ones are pretty heavily torpedo laced, and so they rely on torpedo targeting, whereas the Firestorm Frigate has a prow lance and a macro turret, which means you can have them engage from the front, and they tend to do a pretty good job, especially in large numbers. Once your fleet is prepared to engage the enemy, you should set course for the target system at once. Indeed. Let us make for Acre. The fleet has reached the last known position of the heretic ships. Their sedition must not stand. How shall we deploy our flagship? I'm going to strongly suggest... Oh, never mind. They're going to make now me deploy. Select how you wish to deploy remaining ships of the line. Now that your cruisers are deployed, you must next determine where to place the Firestorm escort vessels. Don't underestimate your your escorts, like, they get a bad rep, but seriously, escorts deal a lot of damage. And while they are fragile, if you've got, like, six escort vehicles, they can pretty much just destroy anything in the game if you give them enough time and cover. So, definitely, I underestimated, when I first started playing this game, I really underestimated my escort vessels. And frankly, they're actually a pivotal part of my strategy a lot of the time now. Your new promotion has placed you in command of the entire fleet, Admiral! That means you can order your captains to adopt engagement modes during the battle. These engagement modes define how your captains act in battle. You can change the engagement modes at any time. Admiral, the Firestorm escort ships have powerful prow weapons. I would advise setting these ships to a frontal attack. A good understanding of each ship's weapons is the best way to know which engagement mode to use. The macro cannons on our ships are most effective when fired at short range. Now that we've deployed the fleet, it is time to root out these rebellious traitors. Completely different than rooting for the rebellious traitors, which is a bad plan in this All universe. All ships, coordinate your movements. We will advance as one group at the same speed. We will set course for a gas cloud, and use it to ambush the rebel ships. Once our ships enter the gas cloud, it should mask our fleet's emissions. So essentially, what they were talking about back there is from here. 
You can do them on auto engagement. You can tell them to attack a side for broadsides, or you can tell them to attack from the front. You can tell them what range you want them to engage at, and each one of these comes with penalties and bonuses. You can also tell them to engage on both sides automatically to the closest enemy, or you can have them engage starboard or port side only if you wanted them to do that. That's important later on with friendly fire and stuff like that. You can kind of disable it if you're fighting in a line. So let's say you've got like five ships in a line going down firing batteries over to here, and then one turns into the front. Eh, you might want to deactivate fire, but I don't actually think there is friendly fire right now. The gas cloud will hide us. It essentially makes us invisible on the map. It's a good place to be if you're trying to survive. What the hell is that thing? I think this is an asteroid that they built a base on the side of. I don't know. It's got like a cardioid thing going on. Fleet, sir. We're invisible to the enemy ships. Excellent. The trap is set. Now we wait for our prey. Sir, I've detected an enemy vessel. Shall I engage? Wait until you have identified your target, Captain. I have a probe ready to launch, Admiral. That ought to tell us what we're looking at. Very well, Captain. Launch the probe. Launch the probe. And so the probe. The probe should be... Ah, there it is. Every single ship will have different abilities and different supplemental stuff that they'll be able to use. So, for example, this one has torpedoes, which, as you can tell, they fire to the front. Torpedoes have friendly fire, so watch out for that. However... You've got two options here that actually didn't exist the last time I played the game. So you've got melted torpedoes, which set the enemy ship on fire. Don't underestimate that. Setting the enemy ship on fire is really, really good. Fire in space is bad. Very, very bad. And then normal torpedoes, which are armor-piercing and do a ton of damage. But what they want Choose us to do... Choose where you want the probe to go. The probe will identify any nearby signals. They want me to fire a probe, and so that's what I'm going to do in the tactical cogitator. The probe will identify... So these right here, until they're inside this green ring, you can't tell what you're fighting with. And so this is essentially your maximum engagement range until further notice. They will identify them when they come inside of this, and then we will go ahead and engage. But the probe is a way to get around that so that you can plan tactically before they arrive. This probe will go by, it'll scan him, we'll know what we're up against, and then we can decide what we want to do. Although this first battle is essentially a Axel, gimme. It shouldn't be that difficult. Is he engaging to a front? Okay, good. He should also be engaging to the front. Levels. Now that we have identified the ship, our weapons cogitators can automatically target the enemy vessel. All ships, attack the enemy vessel. Yeah, you can't target anything when it's in cloudy mode. I mean, you kind of can. But until they identify it, let's say that your range is longer than your identification range, then you won't be able to fire until they identify it first. And so you can, however, drop bombs and like nuke entire areas if you want to. So, Admiral Spire, did Ravensburg send you to bring us to heal? There are other powers in the galaxy besides the Imperium, Admiral. They can reward you for your skill and your devotion. Ready. My suggestion, oh, he failed to board us, but I wasn't expecting him to try and board right there. Instead, you, sir, should board automatically whenever he's in range. I'm going to try to keep everybody... Are down. Sir, I suggest that we concentrate fire on their plasma generator. Targeting the plasma generator drains the ship's power. They'll have difficulty using their warp engines. And that's a good thing because you really don't want these guys to escape if you can help it. You want to get the kills so that you can get that bonus renown. Destroying ships in this game is very much like destroying ships in ancient 1700s combat. Or, I guess, in colonial combat. Destroying a ship was a big deal because ships are expensive as hell. And so anyways, you kind of want to destroy them if you have the opportunity to do so. They've been targeting. He's taken a little bit of damage, so we got to click on that right there. That'll restore his bar, although you don't lose anything for your... Ooh, good. We destroyed one of their turrets. Less damage coming at us. I accept that. Admiral, this is a battle we cannot win. I'm taking my ship out of this mess. Admiral, he is activating his warp engines and preparing to disengage from the battlefield. This cowardice cannot be tolerated. Admiral, we must put an end to this pitiful display and make an example of this craven fool. And so what we can do is we have a limited amount of time. We can execute the captain. This is Lieutenant Kraft. We've executed the captain and taken back control of the ship. Well done, Kraft. You've been promoted to captain. Follow my orders and we'll get through this. As you command, Admiral. You may have noticed that our ship got set on fire right there. You can click this little button right here, your automatic repairs to get rid of that debuff. 
and it is a very smart idea to do so. Let's... I'm gonna lightning strike him the second his shields go down, actually. Let's wait for the shields. Lightning strike automatically teleports people over. It's a little bit less efficient, as far as I remember, than using... There we go. Perfect. Lightning Strike just teleports Marines on board their ship, whereas this one right here physically launches them on boarding pods onto the ship. The boarding pods do damage themselves, and so tends to do a little bit more damage. Oh good, they've got two fires on board. You'll notice that his health goes down gradually, all by its lonesome now because we focused on that. We want everybody focusing their fire on his engines. I don't want him warping out at all. Enemy ship, sir. Their void shield capacitors are destroyed. Yes. Is there a reason you're not engaging a side here? There we go. I think our ships are piled up on each other and get each other's way. Oh, he boarded us. That's fun. How nice of him. Why are you engaging to the front, sir? You should not be. You should be engaging a side. I may try to get him with Meltas. However, you got to lead him a little bit if you want to get him with the Meltas. And so what I would suggest is that we turn like that a bit and once we've led him we go like that gotcha and that also puts him in perfect position to do his why does our ship look like it's on fire right now the enemy ship has activated its warp engines and is attempting to disengage i have a strike team of navy armsmen ready to sabotage the enemy's warp engines we must act quickly and use the ship's teleportarium to launch the attack. And yeah, so that right there, lightning strike, cancels out their warp jump. Your faith in the Emperor is as false as your courage. Silence this heresy. Fire all weapons. My faith is strong as steel tempered in the fires of chaos. I renounce you, depravity. We should keep our distance from the enemy ship, sir. It will soon explode. And it is gonna be rad. All ships, you fought with valor this day and proven yourselves worthy of the Imperial Navy. Huzzah! Yay for us! The Emperor is the best! To leave the system. I must report our victory to Lord Admiral Ravensburg. Break out the lemonade! It's party time! Huzzah! Chaos has defeated me, Lord. So 97 Renown. Not altogether too bad, and that'll take us up to level 2 as an admiral. But for right now, we're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. This is Battlefleet Gothic Armada. Thank you for stopping by and enjoying 40k with me. It's one of my favorite things in the entire world. I will see you all later. Bye, everybody.